Welcome everybody to our interview with Alina Kopolnik today. Welcome to Hupola. Um, she has had, she considers herself a star traveler to begin with and she's had many many experiences um, with ET races and um, she's an intuitive empath, alternative medicine healer, a shaman, a psychic and many other things. But for now I'm going to let her speak and let her talk about her experiences, her lives, what's happened to her and uh, where does she stand now. So, And I also want to say thank you to everyone who's here for coming. Thank you uh, for viewers and uh, thank you all for, for joining in us in this moment. Maria would like to do a small blessing, so we start off on the right foot before that, and then we'll let Nina speak. I just want to say hello to everyone who are joining us at this moment right here, right now, and I really want to appreciate Elena for spending part of her day, Valentine's Day, and accepting uh, my invitation. I really appreciate that, Elena. And uh, let's start with a blessing. Asa ini iliyama ataki ulu utunia alataku. Blessing to all. Thank you. And on that note, Lena, you may start with your story. Okay, so my story began really in 2013 when I found out that I um, had some life threatening conditions actually and I was told I would die in 10 years if I didn't fix my health. Um, so that made me realize that I was missing something in my life. At that time I was just half awake and I was searching for what was missing in my life. Um, so I had what is called a, um, a health crisis in the shamanic world where I was not a aware of myself spiritually, what my higher self was and what I really needed to do on this planet, my human mission, my galactic mission. So I started learning spirituality. I first started uh, learning crystal healing to actually interface with crystals and that opened up my um, my chakra systems. My third eye, my heart chakra, my brain opened up, my star galactic chakra, the one that's the um, soul chakra here opened up and that's how my journey really started with crystal healing I learned how to create crystal grids like human body grids around myself with various crystals to boost my energy levels because I was tired all the time um, I also learned how to do crystal grids I learned how to manifest from the etheric dimensional planes into the physical human plane of existence how to manifest things quickly with the grids using um, intentional wording with positive intentions I would put whatever I wrote under the grid under the glass of the grid base and the crystals were on top and I would verbally voice out my manifestations and I started noticing that things would manifest physically and quickly for me my health improved a little but not a lot that was just the first stage then I went on to learn shamanism and um, I started doing soul retrieval work and past life regression and that's how I learned that I'm the star traveler and I've had over two million lifetimes as a galactic being that's one lifetime experiencing two billion and two million lifetimes as one being but really different lifetimes. Um, so that was a very interesting experience 
and I was lucky enough to have a great shaman teacher, Leonard Howell, who taught me the Native American shamanism, and uh, God bless his soul, he was wonderful. He helped me to open up and unlock my memories, my cellular memories, and who I really am, blending my human self with my galactic self. And that just woke me up completely. But it wasn't enough because my health was still struggling. So I went on to learn Wicca magic, white light magic. Um, that opened up my psychic ability so much. I started seeing all these images, um, all these places, and I said, you know, I'm ready to have galactic contact with benevolent ETs. And I contacted Tolik, who is a human Andromedan representative for the Andromeda Council on the um, 12 to 14 biosphere ships that are sometimes around close to Earth. They orbit Earth. They're cloaked most of the time. So after I made contact with him, I started, I started having contact with the Andromeda Council, their um, fourth to um, ninth dimensional beings that are caretakers of the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy. They help protect humanity from um, invasions by the negative ETs and they also help us to avoid natural disasters on the planet Earth from outside cosmic events like comets, passing us by asteroids, Nibiru, whatever heads our way. They help to deflect that. So I've had contact with them I've had contact with uh, Ambassador Tonka, Maka, and Tanya Pikai, who's one of the biggest representatives. She's a chairwoman on the Andromeda Council. She looks a lot like Charlize Theron, the actress. She's blonde. And I've done some work for Tolik for his Mount Shasta conference last year that he went to. And that's how I started um, working with graphic design and images to um, actually physically represent what I see on the biosphere ships when I go up there, because I go up there on a regular basis. I'm in meetings with the Andromeda Council members, and that way I met a lot of my old friends from the Andromeda Council, because as the star traveler, in my two billion lifetimes, I would really work with the Andromeda Council a lot. That was who I primarily worked with and still work with in this human lifetime that I'm in right now. So um, that's a huge part of my life, and I work with other benevolent star being groups. I work with the Sarian Council. I work with the Zarian Council, and these are um, beings that live far away from Earth and in distant galaxies. So people might not have heard of them. Um, I do talk about them on my website, the images I put up. So there's a lot on the messages from a stra Star Traveler website. Um, so basically through uh, doing the white light magic and the shamanism, I really opened up in my galactic self. And that has helped me to improve my health because I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Basically, um, my thyroid was eating my body because it was an imbalance. It was a hormonal imbalance. It caused me to have anemia that can be controlled with even liquid iron and stuff. My iron levels were so low. And when I went to the doctors, they said to me, well, if you don't improve your health, if you don't go on some kind of thyroid medication, you'll die in two years of, in two to ten years of a heart attack. Um, you need some type of surgery to take care of your anemia because whatever you're doing, it's not working. So I insisted on having a hysterectomy. I had my uterus and my cervix removed, and suddenly I got better. Like, my health came back to almost normal. I did some blood work tests, um, and I found out that I have had the Epstein-Barr virus, the um, chronic active version of it, and Epstein-Barr virus is um, basically a herpes slash encephalitis virus that attacks the human nervous system, the brain, the thyroid functions, goes st straight to the thyroid. It also goes to the gastrointestinal tract in uh, the stomach. So I've basically not been um, able to eat most human foods that are um, 
grain, wheat, or corn, or even rice. So I've had to go on a very strict organic diet, almost vegan. I still need some meat, but I only eat white turkey meat. Um, eating meat is not energetically well balanced because when an animal is killed, its energy is transferred into the meat byproduct and the human host who ingests the meat, they, they feel that fear of the animal dying, of how it died how its life ended. So I only eat turkey meat, only organic meat. Sometimes I eat poultry, chicken, uh, free range. All of my food is organic. The vegetables that I eat, the salads, the fruits, it's all organic. It's never GMO. Um, it doesn't have any additives or preservatives. My body can't handle that um, because of the Epstein-Barr virus, which I was infected with by the reptilians. Uh, from the age of four, I was abducted from the age of two to ten at night by the um, Draco Hydra reptilians, the, the royal ones. I was experimented on as a young child because I was born in the Ukraine and a lot of people are abducted in the Ukraine. It's one of the hot spots for UFOs and um, alien abductions. I was abducted by the reptilians. They tried to change my genetic DNA structure, my galactic genetic structure, um, by infecting me with nanonites, which caused me to have that Epstein-Barr virus. And nanonites are little microchips that flow through the bloodstream and multiply in the human body. And they go all over the body to the brain especially. Um, I have been able to heal myself and prevent the nanonites from replicating further so I'm much more healthier than I used to be because I've embraced my true galactic heritage and explored what my life was before, what my life is now, and what my life could be in the future. So I fully um, reintegrated my soul, all almost all aspects of my soul, into this human body that I am in right now. And I've spiritually um, come to terms with who I am, who I always was, who I am, what my mission here in life is, and that I am a representative for a lot of the benevolent beings, and I work with multiple groups of the benevolence. So I'm in and out of my house all the time. I'm, I have a new catchphrase There's that I say, boom, 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 there's a party in my room, and there is a ET party going on in my room most of the time because I have friends visiting here at my house. I'm going up there on the ships. I'm going on different planets. I'm doing tours of different galaxies. Basically getting reacquainted with all of my galactic friends from the Star Traveler life um, before I ascended into the third dimension here on the planet on Earth because I was uh, living in the higher um, dimensions basically from 6th to 12th and higher dimensions. I work a lot of with the elves, which are the builder race that was originally here on the planet way before the Atlantean or the Lemurian civilizations. These guys, the elves, were here like 20 million years ago. The planet is not just, you know, 4 billion or 4 million years. It's, it's actually quite um, 17 million as I believe or even 20 um, I wouldn't be surprised the universe is billions of years old not what scientists currently say so we've been around a lot longer civilizations have formed and fallen and formed again it's been a huge cycle because the planet was almost always in third dimension stasis the planet was originally planet earth was originally in um, the 12th dimension, then it slowly fell as um, negative ETs came in and did experiments and different refugees came in from other planets as they were destroyed in the universe, in the Milky Way galaxy and other universes and galaxies. So our Earth is made up of many different genetic species, 20, 22 I believe. Um, so this has been a big experiment, but now the planet wants to go into the higher ascend, into the higher dimension again, into the fifth dimension, and we're here along for that ride. 
and we're experiencing this and getting ready for this higher dimensional event shift as it's called. So this is basically my life story and what I've been doing and messages from a star traveler, my website, my galactic website is basically representing all of these ETs, positive ETs that I deal with right now and the messages that they're giving me because they said please create the website, we'll help you so you can help humanity to awaken, to teach people about ascension, the people who want to learn about the ascension, who want to awaken, who want to know their star traveler origins, their galactic origins, who want to learn about their star families. So basically that's what I did. Um, I have a lot of information. I have over a hundred something pages on that website and they told me to, to publish the website for free, to not pay for a domain name because that's not how it should work for me. So it had to be a free website for the people, by the people. That's, that's what one of the agreements was with the Andromeda Council. That um, So my website has a Wix.com free banner on it. I don't mind. It doesn't bother me and I hope it doesn't bother anybody else who visits it. But this is done for free. I put up a lot of information for free so there's a good balance of energies, of positive vibrational energies that goes up to the universal consciousness that's here on earth to the collective public of people that choose to come to the website and learn from it. I have started doing um, soul reading sessions and psychic readings. It, it's a new service on the website. Um, so people have asked me for readings and I've done that. They've also asked me to put up a donations page where they could donate if they feel like it for whatever amount they're comfortable with um, because they think the information is important on the website and they really want to thank me somehow. I don't feel comfortable taking people's money but it's free choice, free will. If somebody wants to donate they can um, and it just goes towards making more resources on the website and I also have my YouTube channel, Awakening Cosmic Reality Show, on YouTube where I interview people and I put up my own video presentations of what the um, benevolent ET races are that I work with. So there's presentations on there, video interviews, and I also do uh, my own podcasts of my experiences with the benevolence um, and some of the healing work that I do. So that's on the um, Awakening Cosmic Reality Show YouTube channel. So you can find me on Messages from a Star Traveler, my website, and on the Awakening Cosmic Reality Show. Everything that I do is on both places, and I usually do regular updates of what's going on. Um, so would you guys like to open um, the chat now to questions? Yes, thank you for that. Um, can you speak a little bit about, in specific, the uh, ETs that you're working with and what their message is, um, and what is it that they think us as a whole, as a humanity, uh, are most in need of working on in order to move on further with the Ascension? So I'm basically right now working a lot with the Andromeda Council. I'm on the biosphere ships primarily on the primary Andromeda biosphere ship and it's a circular um, it's a circular living biosphere. It's round and it has 26 decks and it's made organic of organic material like living biomaterial. So it's alive. The whole planet slash ship whatever in human terms it is, it's like a Dyson sphere, but it's a living planet that travels in space. There's 12 to 14 of these biosphere ships. That's where I mainly go in my ET work. Um, and the message is from them to humanity to slowly start awakening for those that aren't awake yet, but they feel like something is missing maybe from their lives it's time to slowly awaken the mass consciousness of the human population. It's time to know the truth of what's really going on in this world because we are about to go through some major 
um, planetary changes and cosmic changes. The Milky Way galaxy is evolving. It's not this planet that's evolving into the fifth dimension. It's not just this planet. It's other planets in the solar system. So we have to um, match our vibrational frequencies of the human bodies that we're in to the vibrational frequencies of the planet Earth in order to continue to evolve with her because she's evolving much quicker than we are and we're really catching up to that right now. The Schumann resonance of the planet went from 7 to 9 to 10 to 17 to 20. Sometimes it drops and then it goes higher um, and that's an indicator that we are evolving as well. We're just catching up to the planet energetically. People are starting to ask questions, well what's going on with the economy? What's going on with wars? All these secrets are starting to come out. All these whistleblowers are coming out and telling us, well, your reality is really not what it seems. You guys need to wake up as a collective and let's make positive changes. So that's the Andromeda Council messages right now that I'm receiving. So through me, I basically put out the information that they give me. And other races, they want to introduce themselves to the human population. Who they are, what they do, what what their primary mission is here in the Milky Way galaxy and that's to protect us from any incursion by the negative regressive species of ET races. There's still a few of them here on the planet. There's still some reptilians lurking around in parts like underground bases um, and I've I've seen some reptilians. I recently had a talk with the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth and she told me that she's a 7,000 year old um, royal reptilian and that she's been around here for 7,000 years um, and that there's actually a um, much higher, that she has higher bosses than her, the AI overlords that are um, have mixed in um, dinosaur, ancient dinosaur DNA with technology and they're over a hundred feet tall and they live on this technological planet. Um, so they've basically... Um, Can I interrupt you here? When you say you've spoken to her, you mean astrally, physically? How do you mean that? Uh, telepathically on the astral plane. I've speaking, spoken to the Queen of England recently. Because um, there's all this news coming out about the reptilians still being here that uh, they're slowly backing off, but they're still here working with the cabals and the Illuminati. So I just, I actually had no idea the Queen of England was a reptile. I had no idea, but I read this article about um, how Diana was murdered uh, because she knew so much of what the royal family does and who they are, that they're, they're reptilians. And something just clicked in my mind and I said, Queen of England, I would like to talk to you. Elizabeth, I would like to talk to you. And she's like, well, Star Traveler, you finally didn't to talk to me. Um, so she was very sarcastic and she's like, um, aren't I below your standards? And I said, well, I'm curious about you and I'd like to talk to you. I do not fear you at all, so you can't do me any harm. You cannot do anything to me. And she's like, wow. Um, she had a chat with me, so she's basically said that the um, that there's higher um, overlord groups that the um, white royals and the reptilians answer to, and those are the dino um, AI overlords who've mixed ancient dinosaur DNA with AI technology. But apparently, these guys also like to do stargazing and look at the beautiful blue sky. So they have some organic components on their planets. I actually went to one of their planets and these dino reptiles um, slash AI love to sun themselves outside and um, have a drink of water and look at the blue sky. So even though they've mixed themselves up with technology, they still like to look at the beautiful sky have some organic component in um, on their planet. So that's interesting and they feed off of human energy, like soul energy. They don't physically eat humans, they just like to feed off of positive energy. 
as well as fear. So, and these um, overlords want, want to come to this planet and eat our energies. And I said, no, we're going to keep the Stargate portals closed from you. You will not have any incursions into the Milky Way galaxy, Andromeda galaxy, or anywhere else where there's sentient life forming. You can't control us. You can't take our energy. We are waking up. When we won't allow you to do this to us because they have plans. And um, Andromeda Council has its own plans to prevent that from happening. They're constantly monitoring um, the various timelines happening in these uh, galaxies, Milky Way Galaxy and Andromeda Galaxy, as well as monitoring the Star Gateway portals to make sure that unauthorized entry cannot happen by these AI over overlords, dino overlords. So that's something I've been working with them on to prevent that, with the Andromeda Council to prevent the reptiles from coming back. So, so in your opinion, all reptilians are ne negative? Not all reptilians are negative. There are some reptilians that were born here on Earth millions of years ago that naturally they evolved here on Earth and they're healers. They're, there are some benevolent reptilians, so not all reptilians are bad. It's mainly the, um, the Draco Hydra and the White Royal reptilians that are bad and negative. But not all uh, reptilian species are the same. There's also amphibian species that look like reptilians, but they're not. Um, I work with an amphibian species called the guaguag. They're basically three um, similar species of frog people. They're traders by nature. They're barterers and traders. So they make trade agreements, and they're fourth, fifth dimensional. They're very interesting. They've helped me out. I don't like money. I don't like the money system, but I have to work with it because I'm on this planet. But they've helped me to balance the energies of the money that I work with, so I don't see it as uh, slave labor money or slave money at all. I actually have a more positive uh, energetic interface with money now um, after working with the guaguag, and they've taught me... Um, galactic language is light language, and I've mix that up with the Native American um, shaman light language. Um, so I do that. That's how I heal myself. So not all reptilians are bad. There's also lizard people, and some of them are positive as well. They're great healers. Um, they're great seers. So not all reptilians are bad. Okay, thank you for, for that. Um, Michelle wanted to know the the frog ones. Wh where are they from? What galaxy? I have that somewhere on my website. I can't quite remember which galaxy. It's not around here. It's far away from um, the Milky Way galaxy. They're not from this galaxy. Okay. Um, they travel out in these freighter ships, and these freighters look amazing. Um, and basically, they create beautiful artwork, fountains, clothing, beautiful fabrics like made from silk. They're good weavers. Um, they're the Guagata, Guaguag, and another um, Guagana. So those are the three um, basic Guag species, Guaguag species. When you, when you, I'll let Valerie go after this, when you communicate with all these entities, how are you doing it telepathically? Do you channel them? How, how I, do they speak to you? I don't channel anyone. I do not. Um, channeling sometimes allows for negatives to come in, and it's harder to protect yourself through channeling. I usually go up on the ships either physically or I telepathically communicate with my benevolent star uh, contacts. Um, I do a lot of physical, actually, um, physical work with the ETs. I literally, my physical self goes up on the ships and stays there for a couple of hours or a couple of days in meetings, in different various projects, like a lot of it has to do with star gateway portals, protecting the natural portals, making sure um, no incursions happen in the galaxies. Um, and some of it is telepathic. But even when it's happening telepathically, I'm still part of my soul spark, soul spark that is 
inside me goes up on the ships. So even though my physical body is down here, I'm, I still feel like I'm physically up on the ships because I project an avatar of myself on the ships and I'm there. And it still feels like a physical uh, manifestation because the avatar represents who I am. It's physically up there. Even though my human body is down here, half of me is up there. So even if it's telepathic, it's still very much physical to me because the avatar is up there. And I see things and I experience things and um, I have a photographic memory, so an adiatic memory as well. So I remember everything that I see, hear and experience in the physicality and when I astral travel and do telepathic work. Okay. I just have a question you. if you don't mind. Um, I may have missed this, but I'm just curious as to, after the reptilian thing, when was your first um, connection with the positive entities, and how was that? Was that telepathic as well? Um, well, I started doing work with Ashtar Command, with Ashtar and Athena, from 2000 until 2010, I consider the Ashtar Command positive, the group that I deal with. I was on um, Ashtar's and Athena's primary command ship, helping to um, fend off the Milky Way galaxy from reptilian incursion at that time, because that's that was the 10-year period where the reptilians really tried to take over the Earth. And Ashtar Command um, actually helped to defend the Earth from so that wouldn't happen. And I was their communications attaché. Um, so I basically, um, what I did was I carried messages from Ashtar Command ship to the other fleet ships. I coded and decoded the messages so everything was encrypted so the reptilians couldn't intercept our messages. So I was the commu private communications attaché officer to Ashtar and um, his twin flame, Athena, who's like um, a sister to him, a twin sister, if you would say. Um, they're, they're both blonde, and they're very nice people. They primarily wear blue uniforms. And as well, that's, so that was from 2010 to 2000, sorry, 2000 to 2010. I spent a lot of time on their ships doing that work. Which was very, I was very blessed to have met them, and that was primarily physical. I would literally go up on those ships. But literally, my memory. You mean as in literally, like um, in your whole body go, going to the yes, ship? Yes, yes, okay. yes, going. Uh, their ships are saucer shaped and triangular shaped. They look very similar to the Pleiadian ships. They also have crystal cities where you could do arbitration work helping species like the Greys, who unfortunately gave up their humanity and um, linked up with technology so they couldn't reproduce. Um, I did some arbitration work to help them to try to make them understand that if they want to reproduce and regain their soul and humanity back, so they, can they can't ascend um, from the lower dimensional levels to the higher ones, because uh, they did allow themselves to be genetically engineered. And that was done by the reptilians. At one time, the greys were organic. They were like human beings. But they gave up their humanity for technology. And so they've been cloned. So I did some arbitration work in 2015 with the greys to help them to see the light, so to speak, and to agree to give up some of their technology so they can regain their humanity. So that was my recent work in Ashtar Command in one of their light cities. Okay, I just have one more question about that. Are you the only human that is up there? Or when you get there, do you see other humans physically there? Well, Ashtar Command, they all look human. There's no real okay. difference between but them and us. Would you know the difference? There's no real difference. You're saying they could come here and live here, we could go yes. and live there. Okay. They okay. could live here temporarily because their vibrational frequencies are a lot higher than ours. So they look human, but the real difference is when you read their auric field, you can tell right away that they're not 
from this planet, that they're from elsewhere. Because humans, we all, like the humanoid species that look humanoid, like, like us, you can't tell the difference whether they're ET or human-based unless you have some psychic um, abilities and can actually read um, energy levels of beings, soul spark readings, so to speak, as I call it. Uh, that's how you can tell the difference. Can I ask how do they take you up to the ship? I say I want to go up to the ship now, and I physically beam myself up. I have that ability. I don't need teleporters, teleportation devices. I say, I say telepathically, I want to go on the ship now, and I literally beam myself up on the ship. Sometimes I go in my light body. When I don't want to take my human self up there, I take my light body up there on the ship. Basically, okay. I float okay. around in space. I'll pass the mic to the next person. Thank you, Elena. Sure. Okay, Elena, I have a question for you. I was just going to ask you about first contact. A lot of people are still waiting. A lot of people are waiting for first contact to happen in 3D. I just wanted, you know, wanted to know what is your perception about that? Is that real? Is it something coming up? You see, as you know, in the future sometimes, or it already happened. Well, it's already happened to many psychics, star travelers, spiritually de developed humans. So it's been happening for eons to um, to the spiritually evolved beings that are living on this planet, the humanity. So it's happened to us already. Um, the people who haven't awoken yet, who don't really believe in ETs they'll probably not have the contact very soon with the benevolent ETs. Um, I would say this planet needs to continue to evolve. and we're, When we're in the higher dimensional frequencies of the fifth dimension, that's when most ET contact will start to happen en masse to the people on this planet. That's how I see it. Um, a lot of humans have had contact with negative ETs already, like our governments, United States, um, countries in Europe. They've had physical contact with negative ETs, and they've made some pretty big agreements. Um, so with these, like the Greys and the Reptilians, to have advanced technology, reverse engineered. So our human governments have very advanced technology thanks to the negative ETs already, like the moon has been colonized, Mars has been colonized, and other planets in our solar system and even beyond the Milky Way galaxy have been colonized. Um, so for that to happen, if, if it, it'll, you know, it happens in 3D, do you, can you give us, you know, um, a, you know, how many more years we have to wanna wait or so I can't. I can't give you date ranges. It doesn't work like that. It'll happen. It'll happen when the human collective is ready for it to happen. It's all. Um, it's all based on human readiness or not. Half of the population still doesn't believe in ETs. Some people don't even think there's life beyond this planet. Yes. It, re it really depends on how awake people choose to be, and if they're ready to embrace spirituality and learn beyond what the human standard is right now, which is really, some of the human standard is so based in third dimensional living. People just, you know, live from pay, paycheck to paycheck. They go to work, they take care of their kids. They, they live, they survive from day to day. So they can't even look beyond what's beyond this physical reality into the spiritual realms. So people have to start waking up. Yes. And acknowledging that there's ET first before any contact starts to happen. And based on what you said, first we have to move to fifth dimension. Yes. Right? Before that happens, and I can see that because I had my own experiences with Pleiadians. Uh, mine was mostly about relationship, how they open heart hearted they are. And there is no, you know, their love is not, it's very unconditional. There's no condition. It's based on their energy. 
and how it matches with each other. And um, I don't see that here. And I'm, that's what I'm missing really here. Yes, that's what I'm missing as well. Um, I am longing for that relationship because all of these people, even the spiritual ones, um, neither do you know, they understand nor they're ready for it. There's a lot of hardship on this planet, like, and I mean a lot of hardship, wars, financial wars, um, over land, all kinds of things. So until we get over the hurdle of that hardship and realize that money is just paper, it's not really energetically anything, it's zero really. We have to get back to the communities working together as teams. Um, actually knowing who our neighbors are and saying hi, most of the neighbors are so isolated where I live, some of us don't even know each other's names. So what would happen if there was a disaster? How would we cope, like a natural disaster, an earthquake, or whatever, a flood? How would we cope together? We wouldn't be able to because we're so isolated. And half of the planet is like that. Everybody is just out for themselves, really. Um, people need to start coming together as communities again and trusting each other. That's what needs That's to what happen I'm first. Doing. That's what I'm doing, Elena. Actually, I'm reaching out to other other light workers and trying to, you know, get to know them and tell tell them about us. You know, we need to actually know, you know, about others as well. Yes, exactly. We need to come together as a global community, and that could be physically, that could be online, like what we're doing right now. It doesn't just have to be in-person meetings. I talked to Reiko Salandage and Sam Muggsy. They are um, very important contactees who work with um, the elephant people, the Ganesh, um, the entity that is called George. He looks like an elephant. So I'm in contact with them, and I ask them, how are you doing, what's going on, and they ask me as well. So we compare our ET contact experiences. So we we can say, oh yeah, yeah, we, we can positively say that this happened or that happened. Um, we do comparisons, and it's important that we get, in, get together in contact. And these guys are out in California, Illinois, all over the place. We don't physically see each other, but we Skype. We do interviews together, and that's how we form our positive communities, and we openly share information and communication. The key here is honesty and truth. This planet has a lot of lies and secrets between the governments. Uh, there's secret space programs from what I'm hearing. There's civilized, breakaway civilizations living in inner earth or hollow earth as it's called. Those guys need to come up to the surface and um, help us. Because they're not really ET. They're they're advanced human beings that have lived here for millions of years. And sometimes they masquerade as ETs to make first human contact with the humans on the surface of the planet Earth. So there's a lot going on on this planet. It's more than what people think or what really is, what we really see in physicality. It goes beyond that. There's so much that's hidden from us. You're referring to Agartha and Shambhala when you said Hollow Earth. Some, yes, I there am. are some there are some stories about those. So do you know who are in Agartha? I've, as you notice, my name is Shambhala. <laughs> yes, I do. I've been doing work with them. Yes. I've been visiting there. They have a lot of crystal technology, advanced healing technology that prolongs your lifespan, that totally heals you. So you're free of disease, and they, they're they human. They were the first inhabitants of Earth. They came from Lyra. They came from all over, all over the place, Pleiades, Andromeda, everywhere. They were the first to basically live on this planet when there was no disease, no hardship, no deception. They were the first about 17 million years ago, as they claim. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've studied in a lot of their libraries. Um, studying Earth history as it was before Earth fell and was put in 3D stasis so the planet wouldn't explode. So Lemurians are down there too? Yes, um, they're primarily from the Atlantis civilizations in Lemuria. 
26,000 years ago, that's when they really went um, into Inner Earth, as it's called. And Inner Earth has its own bio-living environment with cities, with oceans, with waterfalls, mountains, um, a sun. They live in biodome cities, so it's not like they just live in caverns in a hollowed out location. It's much more than that. Thank you so much, Elena. I'm, I'll pass, you know, the mic. Elena, if you need to Hi, uh, get a drink or something right now, go right no, ahead. No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Hi, this is Michelle. Um, wow. There's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> my brain's all over the place, but my first question that popped up um, when you said it, we were talking about the reptilians. And um, I know I have many friends who actually channel reptilians, and for some reason my heart chakra went kind of bonkers when you started talking about it. And so I was wondering, like, I guess my feeling is of safety for them, like, how does one um, know whether the reptilians they are channeling are telling the truth of being of light or dark? Well, basically, the way that I do it when I meet a new ET species, and I've had some experiences with negative ones, I say... I am of the true light, the highest light source from Creator. I want you to tell me if you are benevolent or you're a negative. And I want you to be totally honest with me and tell me the whole truth and nothing but the truth. You cannot lie to me about who you are. And that way they are sort of obligated to tell you the truth. Because the wording that you use, whether it's like physically verbalizing it or telepathically, Mm -hmm. You have the power of experiencing first contact or even second or third with species. You have to word it correctly for them to tell you what you need to know or want to know about them or who they are. So if you say, tell me whether you're positive or negative, mm -hmm. tell me the whole truth, tell me if you're lying or not. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you say that to them, there is, um, they're also governed by rules and regulations about non-interference with with humanity mm -hmm. and civilizations that are evolving mm -hmm. so the way you phrase it that's how your contact will be if you say I want to know who you are what you are mm -hmm. what your intentions are towards me mm -hmm. that's how you can find out whether they're positive and negative say to them don't lie to me tell me the whole truth and nothing but the truth right so for instance, my son is draconian uh, mm -hmm. DNA, and they say they're good. <laughs> what is your experience with them, if any? Um, I haven't had any positive experiences with uh, the reptilians. Some draconians are dragon-like, yes. and some of them are positive. Mm -hmm. haven't really been... Um, I actually channel, well, not channel, I deal with the elementals, the dragon people. Mm -hmm. And when I was first learning shamanism, it felt like it was channeling in the beginning because my, um, my energetic receptors weren't as open as they are now. Mm -hmm. So it felt like channeling in the beginning. Now it's all telepathic with the elementals. I uh, work with a silver dragon. Mm, beautiful. And she's... Yeah, especially when I do drumming mm -hmm. with, uh, with I have a drum and a beater stick, so I drum a lot to help the planet to stay grounded and calm mm -hmm. to prevent disasters and earthquakes. Uh, I do a lot of that, and my silver dragon friend comes in. Mm -hmm. And also I have a metal dragon who I work with on occasion. So draconian people could be very interesting, and they really look dragon-like sometimes. But they're also shapeshifters, just like reptilians. So they can take on any shape they want. Yeah. So I don't know why my heart feels really like I feel fear in my heart right now, which is interesting. I guess it's in the idea that maybe maybe we're not as careful as we ought be. Um, 
And maybe that's all I need to say about that. Well, my advice is always be careful who you're dealing with, whether a T or human for that mm -hmm. matter. Yes. Always find out who the person is and what their true intentions are because that's we're creator beings here on Earth. We are able to physically manifest what we want um, with some training, psychic training or just natural abilities that have been dormant but are awakening. Mm -hmm. So we want to know the truth about someone. We can get it. It's all how you ask for it that really matters. If you want to know the truth, say, I want to know the truth of who you are, what you do, why you're here, what's your purpose in contacting me? That's what I always ask when I have first contact with ETs. Yeah. I have not had too many experiences. I guess I'm, this is on behalf of others. Um, one thing you brought up, um, I was told in a session recently that there would be a new type of healing technique and you mention an advanced healing technique from the underworld. I don't know what they're called, Agartha and something? Yes, they have what's called soul obelisks, these huge obel crystal obelisks that um, you stand near it, you touch it, mm -hmm. and it heals your energetic um, frequencies of your human body. It also heal heals your original genetic blueprint of your soul essence so it could heal anything like disease, emotional pain, mm -hmm. um, physical pain you just touch the obelisk and it heals you. So how likely is it that we are gonna have any kind of access to this anytime in the like who even knows are we going to get access to this technology? All I could say is a possible maybe. It all <laughs> depends on the Agartha groups because there are seven primary groups uh -huh. and they're not too keen on um, making contact with the surface dwellers on the planet because they think they're genetically superior to us. Uh -huh. so they have pure bloodlines. They don't breed with uh, anyone on the surface. So they've been quite isolated in their own groups for millions of years in inner earth that's why they're called the breakaway civilization because they were the original humans and they chose to keep their um, genetic bloodlines very pure and to not intermingle with the surface humanity so what so, do they look like? they look like us except very exotic looking uh, some of them have blue skin, some of them look Mediterranean, some of them look Chinese some of them look like Aryan blondes I did not even know this existed. Wow. They're very tall, <laughs> like from 8 feet to 12 feet and even 14 feet Wow. in height. They're very genetically advanced in their DNA structures. So their, their technology is thousands of years beyond human technology. Mm -hmm. And they're hiding in plain sight under Mount Shasta, California. Mm -hmm. There are all these cavern entryways all over the planet in Tibet, Mount Shasta, all over the place in Peru there's so many star gateway portals as well um, so they're so everywhere when they interact or if can they do they basically can they become invisible shapeshift whatever no um, they don't shapeshift they just cloak their um, energetics okay so if you if they so don't want to be seen they won't be seen they right. just shift their energy to a higher vibrational frequency so you won't right. even see them and they do this telepathically right. through their organic way they don't use cloaking technology okay oh that was the other question the AI um, a friend of mine writes scripts and she showed us a page of um, AI script and I felt like I got punched in the chest and I was just wondering if you had like some idea of a reason for that like why that would hurt it was physically painful like ugh. well AI tries to infiltrate um, into your body and live off of the soul essence of your body like your energetic auric field mm -hmm. there's an AI signal that lives in Wi-Fi 
that lives mm. in cell phones, in smart TVs, mm. stuff like that, and electronics. So I try my best to limit um, the exposure I have to technology. Right. And if you hear like the AI signal for everyone, it will feel different. Just tell it, you cannot infect me, you cannot affect me in any way. I'm a pure, human, organic, living being. I don't want technology to interfere with my life. I don't want to become transhumanism. Uh, I don't want to be an AI. I want to be a pure, organic human being, a living essence being that can evolve into the higher dimensions. If the siren call of the AI signal calls to you, just plug your ears and say no to it, because you can do that. Free will for humanity. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We um, all have free will and we have the right to resist the signal and say no. When you say no, it cannot do anything to you, basically. Any AI type of signal or infection or whatever, tell it to go away and it will. Awesome. Beautiful. I'm really glad I got to ask that question. Much love to you. Next. Uh, Z, what did you say? Hello. Um, uh, that's really interesting. Um, my question is, um, how does it work when they are taking you to the ship? And why did they pick you? How it okay. happened that they pick you to, to decide it? to pick you to the ship? Um, basically, I'm already an ET being. I've, I've been an ET being throughout most of my life in my galactic capacity um, before this Earth lifetime. So I'm already an ET. Um, they don't pick me. I pick them who I want to work with. It's based on my free will, my choice. Um, I have a lot of galactic star family friends who I've just remembered, and I'm working with them on the Andromeda Council. I've done presentations of up to about 32 different uh, Andromeda Council folks that I've met. Most, most of it has been females, some males. Um, it's my choice who I choose to work with, and it's the connections that I already had as the galactic ET being. It's, it's connections that I had already previous that I'm reconnecting with in terms of benevolent ETs. It's, it's my choice when I want to go up on the ships, where I go. Sometimes they call me because there's a mission that they'd like me to participate in or I have questions for them. So it depends. It's really situational. Yes. Um Actually, we are all here in the human colony, and actually, the humans are ETs. Yes, and, exactly. Uh, yeah, and we have a huge connection with other ETs, you know, and so yes, we have we... to decide or... I'm just wondering about this taking physically, you know. Well, it's mostly physical. It's also happening on the astral plane, telepathically. It's a mix of all of it combined together. Um, it's not just physical. It's not just telepathic. It's not just astral. It really depends on the situation um, of what's going on. Sometimes I'm called on a mission to go up on the biosphere ships, and I just physically go up. They they say we we need you to come up. Can you can you come up? And I say, okay, yeah, sure. I can come up now. And time works differently there than on the ships than it does on Earth. Can you elaborate uh, more about that uh, physical taking you, just the experience, how it works? Um, yes, I can elaborate on the physical experience. Um, basically, in Earth time, it's a lot longer in the timeline. Say I go up to the biosphere ship, I'm up there for like two hours of their time and here it's been three days have gone and um, I wasn't even missed because I'm either asleep, it happens a lot in the night, or it happens during the day before work. 
because I go to work at 3.45 p.m. Pacific time and I work until 11 p.m. That's um, throughout the whole week. So I have some time during the day and that's when they contact me before work if there's something that they want to talk to me about or a mission or whatever. But a lot of it, um, taking a deep breath here to refocus, just... <sighs> there we go. Or I go in the evening. So there's a lot of information that I get from the council. Uploads, downloads of information. I'm constantly processing information in my head um, to put on the website, to put on the YouTube channel. So does that sort of answer your question? Um, actually, uh, very little. I just need to hear the experience of physically taking you. Physically. Well, I just Same. go up on the ship. I just, I want to go up there. I go up there. So, um, the ships are close or they are far? Um, sometimes they're close. Sometimes they're far. There's no real um, boundaries anymore between what I can do and can't do. If I want to go anywhere. You like disappear in the um, middle of the day or you just sleep in and you astrally go and it, you feel like it's physically? Well, I physically go up there. My, my human body still remains here and yet it's not here. I can be in, in um, multiple places at the same time. I can basically multiply my human body and be in two places at the same time. If I need for my human body to look like I'm sleeping in bed, part of me will be doing that and the other part of me will multiply and go on the ship in a physical human body that looks slightly different than what I look like, what you see in the physicality here. Because I'm a, on a higher dimensional level of existence when I'm on the ships. I know it sounds weird, but a lot of people are evolving and the, they have these abilities to be in, one, in more than one place at the same time, like in physicality. It's like I'm, okay, for example, no, I have a twin. It's not weird, it's just um, when the people are saying, I've been there physically, as from 3D perspective, it's uh, your body with you, with your soul. It's not yes, there, it it's, it's somewhere, you know. You don't leave your body, you go physically, that's mean with your body you are going. It's like yeah. one shot and you are disappearing in front of other people's eyes. I don't do that, I don't disappear in front of other people. Like I said, I can multiply myself, it's like having a physical twin. I don't have a twin, but that's what it looks like and feels like. I'm always here, and yet I'm not here. I don't just disappear in front of other people. That's not how that works for me. I can be in many places at the same time. Uh, my reality shifts drastically. My energy frequencies vibrate differently. Um, the human. So it's like your counterpart. Yes, so there's exactly. There's a lot of counterpart of you yes. that is just. Um, uh, um, oh, my English is just um, uh, it replicates oh itself God. and it goes <laughs> elsewhere. Yeah, like a twin. So it, this is it's. I always like when they said physically. I was like, okay, no, physically, it's it's not physically. You know, it's physically, physically, it's physically, because physically it's with your body you are going. I'm but still going with my body, just my body replicates itself on the higher dimensional frequency and it goes where it wants to go and my human body is still doing human business while, while the other higher dimensional body is doing its business on the ships. So I'm, I'm in two places at the same time in a physical body, it's just space. the galactic body, yes space, mm -hmm. up in space. The galactic no, no, no. You're body. physically body space, but the count part of you are going there because you're yes. not disappearing with your physically body from like. But the other, the higher dimensional counterpart has its own physical body, and it has my own spirit, my soul essence. Everything oh. is all me. Yeah, I'm just talking about 3D. Your 3D body is not going anywhere. 
Sometimes it does. If I don't want to split myself up and I want to go as 3D up there, I go as 3D. But I live a very busy life. And so how it feels taking your physically body, you know, from TV, 3D to higher level, your I physically feel, body? It feels amazing because there's no limitations to what I can do in outer space. If, if I want to teleport from one planet to the other, when I'm on the biosphere ships, I just think it and it happens to me. I don't even need a teleporter. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. welcome. This is called biolocation. Yes, biolocation. Yes, exactly. Or teleportation. It, it, I mean, when you're in the higher dimensions visiting benevolent ETs, there's no limitations in what you can do with your psychic abilities. Um, on Earth, because it's higher, um, they, it's higher dense frequencies of the 3D, it sort of limits you in what you can do psychically sometimes. Um, in higher dimensions, like the fifth and beyond, there's no such limitation or boundaries. Right. I think what she was trying to get at was that is, is it a solid, you know, like, like this body is, or is it more etheric, being that you are on a different dimension at that point? Well, I could um, still be a solid and I can still be in a higher dimension. It's just I look slightly different. And the other mm -hmm. solid form, that's the galactic form. Um, it's like literally splitting myself in two and being in one place and also being in another place at the same time in a physical body. It's just the other higher dimensional body has more capabilities than this 3D body that I'm in right now is this. Okay. Um, since I like to be practical, um, I would like you to maybe perhaps let's shift the conversation a little bit and maybe start talking about things or ways uh, being that most of us you know are pretty knowledgeable um, ways that you could speak about uh, perhaps about when you talked about the energetic receptors um, learning how to how to open that or, or you know, working with the chakras to open yourself up to uh, higher dimension beings, benevolent beings, and, and anything in that order that you could speak of um, that we can do to help ourselves. Well, let's just say it didn't happen to me naturally or easily. It took me a lot of work to get to where I am now through learning different uh, healing modalities and spiritual modalities. Like I said, for me it was quite a journey. I started off with crystal healing, then I did um, shamanism, I also did Reiki. I learned how to work with energies on the energetic level to, um, to be able to heal people physically with energy. I did shamanism, I studied white light magic, um, then I did self-learning about ETs and stuff like that. There are people who all of this comes to very naturally and they could do it very quickly and learn. For others it takes time to awaken and you really have to start to take care of yourself and learn these things. You have to have the desire to do this and to change and to be positive. Where there's a will there's a way. Nothing is impossible. So for each person it's very different. I can't say for one person it will be this or for one person for another person it will be that. It really depends on the individual and what they want to do and accomplish. It's not yeah. an easy question to answer really. Yeah, well, you know, many of us already do many things and have done uh, Reiki, done taken Reiki classes and um, even do healing. Um, so, so do you want to explain a little bit about what, what you mean by the energetic receptors? Well it has to be the soul's desire for positive change. Like if you get sick for example and traditional medicine is not working for you to, to make you feel better because that didn't work for me. Uh, my body physically rejected anything that I tried in traditional medicine. So I said okay that's not working for me. Let's try uh, naturopathic medicine. 
that's how I got into the alternative medicine naturopathic fields of being a certified practitioner. I started eating organically. I don't drink fluorinated water at all. I only drink spring water. So that's the start because um, all our water that comes from the tap has fluoride in it. Our toothpaste has fluoride in it. Um, start drinking natural spring water. Change your diet perhaps. If you're physically feeling ill, tired, or physical aches and pains, migraines, look at your diet. Look at what you're drinking. Um, look at your stress levels. It all, it all depends on where you live environmentally as well, what's going on there. So you have to look at quite a few different things to see what works for you and what doesn't. Sometimes going the route of naturopathic medicine instead of traditional and seeing what supplements you need, what foods you need, that kind of stuff that's very important to staying healthy in this planet, on this planet right now. Um, and also modulating your thinking patterns. If you always think negatively, then your body will be in pain, in a lot of pain. If you focus, if you try to change the negative into a positive, like literally flip the situation, you'll suddenly feel better. It's about modulating your thought patterns as well, what you physically put out into your reality. That's important. Thank you. Um, in terms of the contact, um, we have been in contact with some um, ETs through channeling, and for what we were told was that at the moment uh, physical contact is not allowed by uh, the governments and that it's prevented. It very um, much is, yes. So how is it that they're able to take you or you're able to go? Because you said they don't take you. It was my soul's desire to learn about my galactic star family. I said, I'm tired of having these veils. Okay, so when we're born, right, like you were saying, governments prevent us from having contact. When we're physically born as human beings, as babies, Sometimes what happens is we have an etheric neural blocker implant near our cranium and it prevents us from being able to access our higher dimensional cells, our cellular memories, our genetic blueprints when we grow up from children to adults and it also prevents us from making contact with ETs or having even psychic abilities. Not all of us have these things, these neural implants, but some do especially the light workers and um, because governments have this um, this technology that allows them to see into the future um, and sometimes it could be very predictive they see oh this light worker will accomplish this this star traveler being will accomplish that and they're the ones that get these neural implants so you literally have to work with your spiritual self to remove these neural implants or you go to a light worker to help you so you can remember who you are as a being, as a galactic being and integrate that with your human personality and remember who you are and then you can make contact if you choose to do so. It's the soul's desire and what you really want to accomplish whether you want to do your soul mission here on earth or not. Okay, because um, I think many people here want to, and I have to say, um, maybe you could speak a little bit about this. I, I was just traveling, and where I was, I was able to remember many, many things. And now that I'm back on the States, it's gone again. So I don't know if if you know of a method or a way or something that you can say to prevent that blockage from being there? Well, the way it works for me, I'm tapped into universal knowledge. So at any time, I can say, well, I want to remember my galactic star family, my origins, my history. You have to have the desire and the will to remember, and it usually comes to you. 
if that doesn't happen, it's good to meditate, it's good to be outside in nature, because that really builds a soul level connection to your galactic self and to speak to your higher self or your twin flame or whatever. It's for every person, it's different how they access their, because it's all on a cellular memory level that lives in your DNA. You have all your memories already in your DNA. It's how you choose to access them that matters. And for each person, it's different. Sometimes I, I access this information through meditation. Sometimes I just a ask the universe what I want to know and remember. And I remember and know. Sometimes it happens spontaneously, like you were saying you were traveling somewhere else outside your normal environment, and it triggered you to remember this stuff. So it really depends on your environment, where you are, what you're doing. Okay. Um, Maria, Michelle, and Valerie all have questions on the subject. Okay, let me just get a drink of water. Okay. And we'll answer more questions. Are you doing okay? You've been with us for a while now. Yeah, yes, my voice. Appreciate is, your time. Just let letting us, me know. Yeah, yeah, let us know when when you know you want to close. Maybe fifteen minutes before you want to close. So let us know. Okay, well, um, how many questions do you guys have? Well, I have a lot, but I'll just ask one. <laughs> okay. I can ask one. Okay, let's keep it to one question per person. Me too. Okay. So let's, um, who wants Maria? to ask first? Okay. Hi, Maria. Hi. Okay, you guys are all on mute. Are you? Okay. Um, you were just referring to twin flame. A lot of people have a lot of expression and different definition about it. Some people even they say it's your own flame, it's your own soul. I just want to know. And some people even I've I've read books that before ascension happens, you have to meet your flame or merge. You know, your consciousness supposed to merge into. So, what is your actually? experience and what what have you figured out? Good question. I've had a lot of experience with twin flames. Um, there are different definitions for a twin flame. Let's start off with that. Um, a twin flame could be a romantic connection like a lover or it could be a connection that you are connected to somebody vibrationally like a brother or sister but it's still a twin flame connection because it's very deep connection on the soul level but not as a lover romantically but as a um, as a brother or sister connection and I have that with my friend who's a spiritual researcher we often share the same experiences psychically and he's starting to make uh, contact with the Pleiadians so he'll share his story with me and then I'll go into his dreams or in whatever contact he had, I'll psychically piggyback on that and actually um, through my graphics work with images I'll draw him a picture so to speak of what he experienced and he'll go like, oh my god that's wonderful you're my true twin flame as a brother or sister so that's one connection um, and then I have very deep connections with my higher selves and I have two or three of them so I consider them my twin flame as well because they're they share the same almost soul spark essence as I do. So that's my um, experiences with twin flames. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I was going to ask you. Um, so through a lot of people, they say that the twins are actually a fragment of your soul. Is that true? Yes, it is because the um, higher selves that I deal with have a fragment of my soul essence just I have as I have a fragment of their soul essence so we're energetically connected oh really oh, okay. yes that's the higher self um, connections and these higher selves are actually living physical beings yes on yes. other planets on other starships that connect with me because they're I literally by reading their um, energetic vibrations, I can tell, oh, that's another part of me. 
and I feel very comfortable with them. Yes, yes, I know that. Yeah. Thank you so much. I You're welcome. It. Hi, this is Michelle. Um, so I'm curious about our free will. It basically sounds to me like not just you, but others who have talked about um, site-to-site -site visits or whatever, that we have free will and while the government and other people have made agreements, you know, really? Uh -huh. And related to that, I was thinking about the implant you were talking about and do we have with our own free will to will it away? <laughs> like, yes, we if we're do. we're creators and we're aware of a thing and we don't want a thing, then we can do whatever we want with it. Yes, we can. I had a neuroblocker implant um, and some nanonite technology in my bloodstream. And I said, I'm tired of this. I've had enough. That's why I started doing all the spiritual work. When you're really aware and you can do your own body, literally your own body scan of your body. Mm -hmm. on the, um, it starts on the etheric level and then it goes into the physical Mm -hmm. where actually where the implant is on your body because etheric implants could be anywhere in your body. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, okay, let's do some healing here. So with my thoughts on the etheric level, I said, I don't want this anymore. How can I remove this? And I had some um, help from my higher self. She's, she, th she said, okay, unclamp this thing because it was like a squid. The neural blocker was like a little mm -hmm. squid. Mm -hmm. Looked like like a squid thing. Okay. So she said, one clamp at a time. Start unclamping this thing. Mm -hmm. It had eight tentacles. Mm -hmm. Unclamp each tentacle one bit at a time. Mm -hmm. So it took me 20 minutes to do, to do this on the etheric level. And then mm -hmm. I felt much better on the mm -hmm. physical level after mm -hmm. I did this. Right. So it's knowing what the etheric implant is, what it looks like, where it's in your body, mm -hmm. and really gaining the knowledge to remove it. Mm -hmm. It all starts on so the I theory. I have level. a big sense of I might have this thing <laughs> and I just want it to go away. <laughs> I well, have to be really clear about what it is. Meditate on and what it is first. Okay. What What's its purpose? Why is it there? So when that happened for you though, did like a floodgate of knowing come to you? And if it did, was it mind-blowingly overwhelming? <laughs> Um, the floodgate be happened before I removed the implant. Okay. Once I removed it, the floodgate opened up even more. Ugh. So it's like I just to chose to ignore the implant and continue doing my business. Mm -hmm. But because it was giving me migraines, I thought, why don't I get rid of it? Mm -hmm. And once I did, the floodgate really opened up even more. Now I have like a boom, boom, boom party in my room almost every night with contacts. I'm also working with the angelics, I'm working with the elementals, it's not just ETs anymore. Yeah. It's the whole company of heaven, yeah. it's, it's everybody now who's coming to talk with me. People are emailing me, asking me questions, asking me for help and sometimes I can give advice, sometimes I can't. I am still human, I'm living in 3D right. part of the time. So I try my best to help people in any way I can, but people are almost like there's an expectation to help them mm -hmm. in degrees that I sometimes can't in the 3D because it right. goes so much beyond it. Right. And I want to help everyone that I can, right. but people need to realize that I'm still human. I'm right. still living in 3D part-time. Yeah, part-time, but you also have a boom, boom, boom party every night, which yes, would make me crazy, but anyway. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. This You're is welcome. Has fascinating. It answered your question somewhat? It, it's totally answered my question. Thank you. Excellent. Hi, Elena. This is Valerie again. Hi, Valerie. I, I have to say, I live out in the middle of nowhere, Bill. I live in Montana. And, like, this has been quite the experience for me the whole way through Hukalo and now talking to you. Um, it's been very uh, heart-opening, eye-opening and quite the adventure already. But I have to say, I would love to go on more adventures and into space and do the things that you do. 
you said you started out with the path to shamanism mm -hmm. and I, I find that very appealing. How, how would the normal person who lives out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> start on this path? Can you help me there? Well, just like you, I live out almost in the boonies in, uh, in a little quiet sleepy resort town. Um, I hop online look for shamanic um, shamanic practitioners who teach Native American shamanism. That's the best type of shamanism I found because there's Celtic shamanism, there's Irish shamanism, there's all kinds of shamanism. It's not just one shamanism, there's Siberian shamanism. I wanted to learn Native okay, so American we shamanism. We have Native American reservation really close to here. There you go. That Ask might be if, the place to start then. Ask if there's any Native American elders who teach Native American shamanism. Um, mm -hmm. Ask if there's any people who they've taught who you can talk to to learn about their experiences. Um, because there's degrees of shamans, there's levels of shamanism, one, two, three, four, it goes up to seven. So you want to be studying with a reputable shaman who can actually teach you well. Don't just want to go to any shaman. That's something I've learned because I've had many various teachers. Um, it should be quality shamanism. It, it really lifts you up on the spiritual level. I found my shaman online through doing a lot of research. I actually went on a spirit quest before I uh, found my teacher. And it was very frustrating for me because there was nobody in my area. But he came to me and was willing to work with me. I'm homebound sometimes because I can't even drive or take the bus because it depletes me energetically because of the chronic Epstein-Barr virus. So my teacher came to me, to my house, all the way from a faraway city because I was so eager to learn. I just, he could feel it in my um, soul lessons that this, this girl really wanted to learn this. So he's like, I'll come to you because you have a willingness it's part of your soul. Your soul is calling for this. And I'm still friends with him, and we talk on a regular basis because I finished my three levels of shamanism. We're so connected. When you find the right teacher, you just feel the soul connection. It's the right time. It's the right place. Everything comes together to learn what you need to learn or want to learn. Well, that's wonderful. I've thought about this for a while, and um, I've already learned the Reiki. And I do feel that this is the next step for me. And so I appreciate your time and mm -hmm. commitment to helping others. And um, well, being here with us today has been really an awesome treat. So thank you. Thank Namaste. you. Has it answered your question? It has. I really mm -hmm. appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Elaine, um, I would like to say thank you. I would also like for you to perhaps, you know, in a short, mention a little bit about your services, services that you offer. Sure. Um, I offer through messages from the Star Traveler website. What I do is soul readings. I help people connect with their star families. I can um, let people know what their soul origins are, what their soul name is, um, where they came from galactically, I also help people to find out what their soul mission is on this planet. Um, I do also psychic readings, basic counseling. Um, a lot of my work is done through invocation to help empower people, to help themselves, to open them up to uh, the spiritual side of things and how things work. Because um, I work on the energetic levels a lot. So everything is done energetically. I'm doing a lot of, um, I'm connecting people with the angelic realms. Um, I'll be doing a session with a client where, where I'll be helping him to access his abilities to astral travel. So I helped, I help to open up people's energies literally to all of these, um, to their natural talents, abilities, and gifts, and to make connections with their uh, spirit guides and totem animals. I actually talk to their guides and uh, totem animals and pass on messages through them. It's not channeling. It's just telepathic communication. So that's part of my services. People are asking me to do a lot of healing. Um, 
I'm saying no to those services. I'm doing primarily soul readings and psychic readings. That's what I'm right now. That's my abilities, what my abilities allow me to do. And I'm doing this online through Skype. So people can call me on Skype once we've booked a session. And I do that and, uh, on the services page from Messages from a Star Traveler. Okay. Yeah, because I was there. So when when they're going to book a session, they just tell you which what what they want, if they want a psychic reading or a soul reading, or it doesn't matter? Uh, it really does matter because my schedule is limited. I usually do sessions from 12 to 2.30, Monday through Thursday. I'm not available on Fridays. And I'm available from 12 to... Um, 8.30 p.m. or even 10 p.m. Saturdays and Sundays. I do have a full-time job working in a library, um, and I do mean full-time. So this these services are offered on a limited basis, um, and it does say on, this, on the scheduling when I'm available for bookings, and people email me um, to ask to book a session in the time frames that are available. So it's done by email or a phone call. Or on the form, there's a form on the website that they could fill in. Um, and I have 30-minute sessions, I have an hour session, and I have an hour and a half sessions that I do. So this this work has just begun, the psychic services. Um, before, I just wanted to give information through the website, but people have been asking for this service stuff. So I'm doing it on a limited time basis because of my full-time job. But I try my best to accommodate people as I can, um, provided that I'm not I don't already have a booking and what's going on. And uh, is it based on donations or do you have a, a, a price for the amount of time? I do have a price for the amount of time. It's fifty dollars for a half hour session. It is $65 for um, an hour and $75 for an hour and a half. And I do take donations. Uh, it depends on what the person is asking for. Um, it really depends on the situation with donations work. Um, so it, it, it's on an individual basis, I would say, in donations. I do have a donations page as well. It's whatever people can afford to donate, whether it's some information I've provided from a video, from the website itself, or whether I help somebody by answering an email or a phone call. It's really up to the person. But sometimes people say, well, I, I have $30 and this is what I want you to help me with or to do for me. Sometimes they'll say, I'm sorry, I can't do that because it's beyond what they're asking for, for what they're offering. So there are some boundaries with this type of work. I really have to think about what I'm doing in terms of helping the person to help them the best I can. But you do know, you do have to know what you're asking for and what you're receiving energetically here. That's very important in this service stuff that I do. I found because people will ask me, heal me take away my disease, cure me, and they'll offer a donation. So I realistically have to think about what I can help people with and what I can't or if I'll refer them to somebody else depending on what they're asking and wanting me to do for them to help them. Yeah. And I'm, I'm being really honest here. Yes. Uh, it's very different based on every healing and every session that I do. And for, like, to open up abilities... Would that, would that usually be best for with an hour session or can it be done in a half an hour session? It really depends on the person and if they've um, worked spiritually before with mm -hmm. these different modalities, if they're aware of um, the spiritual aspect, how much they've done spiritually and how much awakening they've done. It really depends on the person. It's different every time. Sometimes it's, it takes a half hour, an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, and sometimes it could take longer. It really depends on the person's um, energetic vibrations and frequencies, how awake they are, uh, how willing they are to work on this stuff if, if their abilities don't come too naturally. It's about the amount of time 
and energy people are willing to take and put in into their um, spiritual growth and growth as a human being and positivity and all that stuff. Okay, thank you. And I want to um, say her YouTube channel is Awakening Cosmic Reality Show. Um, so I've, I've been looking at, at that. Um, I would recommend everyone go there and listen to some of the videos. And and her website is Star Traveler Messages. Um, well, it, it's called Messages from a Star Traveler when you Google it. And the address is Star Traveler Messages. Okay. Um, and if there's anything else you would like to say, Elaine, before we close? Um, to focus in for people on the positive things in life. I know that there, there's a lot of... Um, stuff going on right now politically, financially, not to worry so much about every little detail and aspect of that. Focus on your inner and outer self. Work on yourself spiritually, vibrationally, physically to be healthy and strong. Don't, don't live in fear so much in what could happen or what will happen. Po manifest a positive timeline for yourself and the planet and for the rest of the people living near you and the whole collective as human beings focus on focus in on the positivity and not so much on the negative aspects of things try not to be in stress mode all the time oh my god oh my god this is happening or that is happening because it, it's all levels of stress that accumulate try your best to feel calm and grounded I know that's saying that is hard to do but the less we're stressed the better and healthier we are as a people so that's the advice I would give. Thank you for that, Elaine. And I want to thank Maria for bringing you here. She was the one that contacted you, so I want to thank her for doing that. Uh, great job, Maria. And on that note, I think she would like to do a, a closing blessing. So Maria, take it away. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Elena. I really, really appreciate you from my heart. Thank you. Ini kiti ki ala mata asata kiana ku ala masata kiana ala ine ataku mara ili ala na ala takiana utu ki siti kiana la amata kiana isi shamiari ara ataku ma iti kiana. Can I just add one more thing? Sure. It's about the light language that you were saying. I think you were thanking me for being here. And um, if, if people sometimes start to hear th stuff in their head, like a weird language, it might be ETs trying to contact them. It might be their higher self giving them light language for healing purposes and if you start talking in a weird language that's okay because you're experiencing learning a new language telepathically just something yes. to add in terms of light languages because they're very healing and I started talking in weird new languages that I had no idea what they were so I asked my higher selves to help me to translate what I was hearing telepathically Thank you. So you, you came up with a translation for that. Thank you. Yes, yes. It. It's, a, it's just you were saying something about Canada and about thanking Alina for being here. I could <laughs> gather that much from it. Okay, I think it is Pleiadian language, though. I don't know. I was yes, yes. I was just, I heard Canada and Alina, and I'm like, oh, what a <laughs> smile. Yeah, thank you it so much. Beautiful. And thank Alina, you. do you speak as well? Do I speak lang different languages? Yes, I speak Guaguag. I um, also speak Native American um, slash Chinese language. It's weird. It's blended together. I have a, a light language healing video on the Awakening Cosmic Reality channel YouTube. Um, so I do speak in different languages, like galactic light languages. Yeah, many of us here speak uh, languages. Uh, so... Yeah, we're all familiar with with all of that. So 
it, it's often you just start hearing something interesting and weird in your head and you're wondering what it is and it's often a light language that you're starting to experience and you often voice it out loud and sometimes in the most inappropriate places at work it happens and I'm just don't mind me I'm just doing my thing here don't worry about me <laughs> but you can speak it at will right sometimes yes sometimes it takes me effort to do it because I'm so new to that that's a new ability to hear light languages I'm still new it, oh. it depends sometimes at will sometimes it takes me time to decipher what um, what I'm being told by the guag guag um, some oftentimes I just start talking in it I mean if, if, if it's there the guagwag just said, thank you very much for letting me be here and joining this show. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Namaste. Much Namaste. love. Much love. love to awesome. everybody. Much love. Goodbye. Thank you, Alina. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Alina. Uh, bye. Happy Valentine's.